I'd like to go through in this video uh, the intersect command in SolidWorks. I've used it in other videos and even in other platforms, but I haven't explicitly on this channel gone through what it is or how to use it um, yet. So let's rectify that today. Here I have a bunch of intersecting surfaces. Now, if you've ever had the experience of measuring something on a CMM and producing surfaces and exporting them to SolidWorks, uh, you wish you had the solid that you measured and it's just an empty space in between all of these surfaces. If you've ever had that experience, then this video is for you. Intersect is obviously a tool that looks at things that intersect with each other. Uh, as far as intersect goes, it looks at planes, surfaces, and solids. And intersect allows you to be able to create the empty space in between things that intersect, the watertight space in between things that intersect. It allows you to look at and create only the parts of a part, two bodies that intersect. It allows you to uh, use planes as references. So for instance, here I have all these planes that are intersecting, and if I activate the intersect tool, you have the option of create intersecting regions or create internal regions. I always create both. I like it so much better. And then you select the bodies that intersect one with another. Once you've selected them, you hit the intersect button, and you can see the watertight solid in between all of these planes. I simply hit the check mark, and you'll see uh, I've created a solid, but these uh, surfaces kind of block my view. I can easily rectify that. Uh, if I edit my feature, and I consume surfaces, if I check that box, then my surfaces are gone away, and I have the resulting solid. So that's the way that you can create a watertight, um, empty space into a solid. I've got another part here. And here I have uh, one solid that has the name of the channel, another solid that has kind of the K that shows up in the beginning. Uh, I've done this in another video uh, with FreeCAD. Let's do it here in SolidWorks. Uh, the, the key to this is when I, ex you can see I've extruded one surface or one sketch that has the name of the channel, and then I've extruded another. And on that second extrusion, I made sure to not have merge result checked. If I have merge result checked, then these two bodies will merge into one, and it will not work. Intersect will not work. So make sure you do not have merge result. And you'll notice you can tell these are unmerged because I don't have an edge right here that I can click on. Uh, that's a very easy way to tell that you have two separate bodies. If I check merge result, I have a selectable edge and intersect will not work. I'll even show you. I, choose, I click on intersect and I can't even hit the intersect button. So anything that you want to intersect, Uncheck merge result. Next thing, I go to intersect and I say maybe I want to create only the area that these things intersect. Well, I select all the bodies that I have in my model, hit the intersect button, and then I say, okay, I'm going to uh, just click on anything that isn't part of this K. You'll notice I can click on anything that isn't the K. And when I click on it, it's removed. So you can see I am actually building a new solid. And that is looking pretty good. So we'll check that. Now, because I've created geometry anywhere they intersect, I have a K on one view and the name of the channel on another view, except I forgot to uh, remove that little portion there. So We'll edit, click on it, and rebuild. K on one side and the name of channel on the other side. Intersect recognizes planes and planar surfaces. So if I create a front plane, reference geometry, plane, and I offset a plane, say six inches, and I make a top plane, offset it six inches, and I make a right plane, offset it six inches, so I've created three planes and I have my three existing planes. If I intersect, 
and I choose my front, top, and right planes, and I choose these three planes, and I say intersect, you'll see that the planes intersect this solid. And it even adjusts my planes to show at the points right where they intersect. So I've created a solid without a sketch. I'd like to show you another example. Here I have a cylinder head that I have built in another video, and perhaps I want to cap internal regions to the cylinder head, namely where the fluids flow, the uh, air and fuel in, the combustion chamber, and the exhaust out. Let's say I want to cap that. Well, I can very easily highlight this face, reference geometry, create a plane right on this face, and we're going to offset it zero. We'll do the same. Reference geometry, plane, offset, zero. And then, since I've kept those faces, I can cap my bottom face with a plane. Reference geometry, plane, offset, zero. And now I'll need to cap my uh, spark plug plane. So I'll create a plane there to block off where the spark plugs are. And again, zero offset. SOLIDWORKS thinks of these planes as uh, you know, infinitely large, as you've seen in the last example, but it can be visually helpful to uh, get these planes to, to stretch these planes out a little bit uh, so you can see exactly where they cover. And finally, uh, we have some volume up here. So I'll just real quickly make a plane on top of these, zero. and plane here, offset zero. And that should take care of all of the openings relative to our combustion chamber. As you can see, this is a relatively uh, complex intersect. So let's, uh, I'm gonna go to the history tree and highlight all of my planes to begin with. Then we'll go intersect, and I'll grab the body of my cylinder head as well. Okay, now as you can see, because I use my planes to cap off everything uh, that is connected to my combustion chamber, I ha now have a solid generated uh, from my combustion chamber. That's great. So what I can do is start clicking on the things that I want to get rid of. But as you can see, as I start clicking through this is divvied up into a lot of different sections. I'm going to have to begin to click on a lot of different things. And it can be a real pain to get rid of all of that. So what you can do is change your view to everything that you're getting rid of, which is here. You can select everything. And that resets your view. So if you show included regions or what you would create if you intersected it. Then we're back to square one. So from here, instead, I'm going to click on the geometry that I actually want to include, which seems a little bit counterintuitive because I'm getting rid of the stuff that I want to keep. But as you can see, I have a lot less clicking to do to select the things that I wish to keep rather than the things that I wish to eliminate. And now that I've selected roughly only what I want to keep, I simply choose Invert Selection, and it gets rid of what I haven't clicked, and it's added what I have clicked. And there you can see we have a reasonably accurate uh, depiction of what the inside of our combustion chamber uh, empty spaces would look like. There's a little bit of extra correction that I can do, and that would be if I show my excluded regions. I'll temporarily select these two, and then I can choose all of my valve guide internals as well, if that is important to me. Finally, I'll go back to this geometry and simply again eliminate these 
And there I have the geometry that I wish to keep. And there you have the remaining geometry. So the next time a customer calls and needs to know the volume of a very complex inner uh, surface, like, hey, what's the volume of this really complicated coolant channel? You can be the hero and be able to tell them exactly what it is. I do have a video on that. If you'd like to check it out, I'll put a link in the description. And I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.